Hi everyone, I'm Jeff. Welcome back to Sound and Voltage and this series of videos on FM synthesis. Last time we looked at how FM worked when the modulation was slow, and we identified how each of the three basic controls we have over FM affected the modulation. If you haven't seen that video yet, it's probably worth checking it out. I'll drop a link to the whole playlist in the description. But if you're going to watch just one video about how FM synthesis works, this is the one. Probably a good place to start here is by recognizing that the timbre of a sound, its color or quality, is defined by a set of harmonics. I have a whole other video on why different waveforms sound different, link again in the description, but let's do a quick recap. So far, we're working with just pure sine waves, but most sounds are more complex than that. However, sine waves are the basic building block of sound. Literally any sound, including my voice, can be decomposed into a complex set of sine waves at different frequencies. On its own, a sine wave is rather dull. It's just that one frequency, it's even a little difficult to hear. With only one frequency represented, there isn't much energy in this sound. Now compare it against a sawtooth wave at the same frequency. It's much louder. And when we look at the spectrum for the sound, we can see that in addition to the fundamental frequency there at 110 Hz, we also have the harmonic series stretching out from there, spaced out every 110 Hz above that, and then dropping off over time. It's these additional harmonics that add character to a sound. Different sets of harmonics will create different sounds. Square waves, sawtooth waves, triangle waves, all of the same frequency will have the same harmonic series. The only difference between them is how much of each frequency in that series they have. Now with FM, we're starting in more or less the same place with a single sine wave. This time it's a 440 hertz carrier here on the after later cascades. And like my demo from last time, I'm going to start out with the Captain Big O dialed all the way down into the LFO range. And as I dial up the modulation a little bit, you can hear the instantaneous frequency sweeping back and forth through the frequency deviation. We're literally modulating the frequency of the carrier, we're just doing it slowly. Now I'm going to speed up the modulator. Just like last time, the speed of the oscillation gets faster and faster. The carrier oscillator is fixed at 440, but the modulator is causing it to change its frequency millisecond by millisecond, so fast that we can't hear the oscillation anymore, and we just have this tone. And now, check out the spectrum. We have the original carrier frequency as the dominant component to the sound, but we also have these extra frequency components, positioned 110 Hz apart on either side of the carrier. And that's interesting, right? Especially when we look at the frequency of the modulator and see that it's 110 Hz. And now we have these extra frequencies, we'll call them sidebands, appearing at that exact distance on either side of the carrier frequency. That's crazy. And it's in these sidebands that the magic of FM really lives. We took a couple of sine waves, and by modulating one with the other, we got this richer tone filled with sidebands. Now remember the three controls we have over FM and what they do. There's the carrier frequency, that's 440 hertz. We have a modulating frequency, which says how fast the instantaneous frequency is going to sweep through the deviation range around the carrier. And then we have the modulation depth, which is the amplitude of the modulating wave, and that defines how big the deviation range is going to be. So now I'm going to turn down the modulation depth, and, one by one, those sidebands start to disappear. They're still 110 Hz apart, but there are fewer and fewer of them, and at lower power until the modulation is all the way down and we're left with the original carrier alone. So, I mean, wow, if that doesn't hurt your brain, you're doing better than I was. It frankly blew me away the first time I ran this test. I've been programming FM synths since the DX7, but I didn't realize that this is what was happening. But let's do another quick test to make sure it wasn't a fluke or something. This time I've gone up an octave and the carrier is sitting at 880 hertz. I have the modulator set to 330, the modulation's turned all the way down, and now I start to dial it up, and yeah, we start to see sidebands at 550 Hz and 1210. That's 330 Hz on either side of the carrier. And when I dial up the modulation a little more, we have new sidebands come in at 220 Hz and 1540. They're definitely appearing at intervals of 330 Hz, which is the modulator frequency. And we get more sidebands the more the modulation is turned up. Also, notice that compared to the last example, where the tone was pretty nice, this time it seems much less harmonic and well-structured. So what happens if I turn down the modulator frequency, down from 330 Hz to 220? Well, it takes a little bit to get it dialed in, 
but the quality of the sound definitely varies as we make the trip down from 3.30. And as you might expect now, we see the sidebands are now 220 hertz apart at 440, 660, 1100, and 1320. And we get another sideband on either side sneaking in at 220 hertz and 1540. And now I'm going to turn the modulator back down. The sidebands all disappear from the outside in until we're left with just the carrier. Okay, so that was a lot, and it's probably worth stopping here and thinking about what we just saw and heard. We know that by modulating one sine wave with another, we get this set of sidebands, extra frequencies added to the carrier. Those sidebands appear on either side of the carrier at intervals equal to the modulating frequency. And they're more or less symmetric around the carrier. And the number of sidebands that we see depends on how deep the modulation was. Also, we definitely heard the quality of sound strongly affected by the choice of modulator frequency compared to the carrier frequency. And this right here is the magic behind FM where all of the complex tones that FM offers come from. It's the creation of these additional frequencies and how we're going to manipulate them. There's still so much for us to cover, but this is the core of it and the central secret to why FM does what it does. Now, if you have a couple of oscillators lying around, especially ones that output sine waves, you should definitely set this up and explore a bit. If you can, use a tuner to dial in specific frequencies. I suspect an app on your phone will do the trick and spend some time experimenting. You'll learn a lot more from hands-on exploration than just listening to some YouTuber yammer on. I think for the next video, I'm going to have a small diversion to look what happens when an oscillator modulates itself, and what happens with the sidebands in that case. Give it a thought. What do you think is going to happen? Thanks again for coming on this FM journey with me. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I hope to put at least one of these videos out per week for the next little bit, so I'm hoping I can provide some timely feedback. People have already commented that I should have spent a bit more time on FM radio from the last video, and that might well make a return later in the series. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.